Good evening. My name is Russ Kennedy. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Nasuni. And contrary to popular opinion, it is not a Japanese drink. We do not have anything to do with anything Japanese. We are a file data services company that delivers technology through software-defined uh, capabilities that run in the major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and Google. And we help you manage all of your sprawl and growth around unstructured data. We help companies in your industry, I'm sure, deliver cloud file services for their businesses and take advantage of a lot of the great properties that the cloud providers can offer. Just a couple of quick customer examples so you get a sense of what we do. A company called Electronic Arts, who has heard of them? They build games, okay? They're in a SUNY customer for about seven years now. They took their game build time from a week, seven days, down to less than eight hours by using the SUNY in the cloud because they can take advantage of delivering data all around the world and they can have developers and testers working on the same game at the same time by delivering and distributing data through the SUNY's cloud file platform. How many of you have heard of LinkedIn? LinkedIn, a company I'm sure a lot of you have used or continue to use. LinkedIn is using Nasuni to build their online courses for all of their education that they deliver to uh, you all as consumers. They leverage Nasuni in the cloud around the world and they can take advantage of a number of different properties to help the, the creators and the developers of those games to deliver them to their end customers. So just a couple quick examples. We're around, I've got two colleagues here, Steve Solgrove and Chase Connors. Well, we're happy to help answer any questions that you have and thank you very much. I'm with Armis. We started in 2017. We just won for 2023's Fast Company, most innovative cybersecurity company in the world. They ranked that out of 100. Out of the 540 companies they looked at for most innovative, we actually ranked number 14. To put that into perspective, number one was OpenAI. So what is it that Armis does? So we set out to solve the holy grail of cybersecurity, which is to be able to provide a complete authoritative uh, inventory of everything. And when we say everything, we really do mean everything. Everything from a physical perspective that connects to your enterprise, whether that's IT, OT, IoT, IOMT, to everything in your data center, all of your virtualization, all of your applications, all of your services, to everything that you have in the, in the cloud, all of your workloads. And imagine having that all centralized for you so that you can do things like fix a uh, CMDB. If you're having issues with CMDB, if it's incomplete, if it's difficult to be able to leverage that, to help promote automation and orchestration. Um, it's interesting, we just hired a guy, he spent his entire career at the big four, the PWCs, the Deloitte's, the ENY, so he started two weeks ago and he gave me a call and he said, Andrew, we're missing the boat. And I said, I've been here for three years. What are we missing, man? Tell me, give me more. And he said, when I was at the big four, we would go into companies and leverage tools like Armis to help them save millions of dollars on their licensing for Oracle and for Adobe and for all of this uh, misused spend. And so he's gonna come up with me, just so you know, from the first three uh, days, I guess actually it's July 24th through 27th. If those are things of interest of you, if now's kind of the time where you're having to make decisions on where can we find savings, where can we cut costs, and we can help improve our operations, um, reduce risk, and increase automations, get efficiencies, please reach out to us. Uh, we have a lot of great customers here in the region. I know I've seen PepsiCo here, Kimberly Clark, Alcon, McKesson. So if you have any of that, um, you know we'd love to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Charity Wright. I am a threat intelligence researcher and consultant at Recorded Future. I'm really happy to be here, see so many familiar faces. I want to tell you a little bit about how I ended up here working at Recorded Future. Uh, I served in the US Army and the NSA as a Chinese linguist for many years. And when I decided to pivot over to private sector cybersecurity, I knew nothing about cyber, like literally nothing. I knew a little bit about IT but really my focus was intelligence. So when I got my first job here at a company called Armor Defense in Richardson, 
Um, they hired me on knowing that I had a lot of learning to do. Our threat intelligence provider there was Record a Future. So I literally cut my teeth on cyber threat intel with this company. And back then, 2015, it was the basics. Brand monitoring, uh, some cyber threat intelligence, you know, IOCs and TTPs, all the stuff we need. Um, but now, so many years later, I am privileged to be a part of our research team and now be a consultant to some of our biggest clients because we have expanded so much. Now we offer geopolitical intelligence, attack surface intelligence, and very vital third-party intelligence. Um, so many opportunities to learn through this company for free. If you haven't heard about us before, please go to recordedfuture.com. Check out our free resources. We've got amazing threat intelligence reports and some very cool free tools that you can use. And of course, request a demo. Thank you so much. I am uh, Devya Valmiki, head of demand gym at uh, Armor Code. Armor Code was founded by a gentleman, serial entrepreneur, Nikhil Gupta. Nikhil uh, started Armor Code during COVID. After, sell after selling his previous company, he was wondering what to do next. So uh, instead of starting a random startup, he gathered security leaders from all around and asked a question, what is the pain point that you have and uh, the solution for it? The answer was application security. That's how Armor Code was born. So at Armor Code, we unify application security as well as infrastructure vulnerability mm -hmm. manage management in one platform. So we are a startup. We are technically, if you do the numerical age, two years old company. However, I should say we are a pioneer in terms of our customer acquisition because we have more than 10 Fortune 500 companies as our customers, including the range from um, media, streaming, entertainment, hospitality, retail, one of our dream companies, everybody probably knows, Disney is our customers. And that should validate us uh, for a young company like us. And uh, it's a very, very exciting time for Armacode. Um, so the byproduct of, oh, the, the, the customers love us because they go to sleep peacefully. We take on the risk and we solve that problem for them. And if anybody's interested in le learning how we do that, please reach out to me and my colleague, Ben, over here would be happy to talk to you about it. The byproduct of Arma Code is Purple Book Community. Like I said earlier, um, Nikhil gathered a bunch of, um, a lot of CISOs and security leaders. They all, this was during COVID, imagine like it was all virtual. They would uh, gather every week and wrote a book. Uh, each one of them wrote a chapter and the purple book was published. So after publishing, Nikhil said, why stop at this? They formed um, a community called Purple Book Community. Um, every year every year we um, have an AppsaCon. Please uh, reach out to me if you want to. The reason I joined the company is because of the core values, hungry. Um, one of the, for success, I'm hungry for success and I saw the company position to be successful. So I'm here and the re I'm here in front of all of you because it's given me a platform and I love it. Thank you so much. It's been a great evening. Thanks. Well, hello. How's everybody doing? I am Tanya Phillips. I'm from Kansas City and our barbecue is better. I'm already making friends. All right. We can have that debate after. <laughs> So I'd like to understand who in the crowd has heard of Zerto before, before tonight. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So for many of you that do know us, we are the gold standard in disaster recovery in the industry. Uh, a lot of financial institutions, healthcare, we have a lot of user stories. We've been around since 2009. So a lot of data points around our history. Um, what you really should know if you're not familiar is that we are a software defined platform that performs CDP or continuous data protection. How is this different, might you ask, from backup? We are not snapshots. We are using continuous data protection to take several checkpoints every two seconds in a journal that essentially give you the power to have little to no data loss and downtime. You recover quickly if you had an event. So think about your traditional disasters, right? Human error, tornado, hurricane, yada, yada. But now ransomware is on the landscape. 
and probably 95% of our conversations are centered around ransomware. With our version 10 that we just released, we actually have inline encryption detection. So you can see that checkpoint in which you were impacted. You can go check it out. Um, we have a lot of data on the website. I highly encourage it. <clears throat> Something else that's compelling is a lot of folks are wanting to understand how do we become more resilient and that might mean something like using our capability of one to many, which is on-prem to data center, but also to AWS, Azure, and Google. You can do up to three locations at the same time, and that's powerful, right? So if you're really talking about your DR strategy, migration is another use case, um, and you really want to understand holistically what we can do, there's a lot more than just DR built in there, right? There's a lot of value. So would love to speak with you, and enjoy your evening. Okay, I'm Keith Ryland, I'm Head of Commercial at ITJ, and I'm here with a couple of colleagues this evening, Doug and Mike, and uh, we look forward to uh, spending some time with you both in the roundtable discussions and possibly afterwards, even though we've uh, spoken to a few of you beforehand. Uh, quickly, what we do, ITJ, and why we're here in Texas is we started out in Southern California uh, working with clients that wanted to take advantage of the binational economy uh, that exists there. That is common to all border states. We want to bring that uh, benefit to Texas and companies here. There is a wealth of talent in LATAM. There is a wealth of technical expertise down there. It's lower cost than the US. It's better than India because it's got higher productivity and predictability given the volatility over there. And it's lower risk than Eastern Europe right now, as we all know. What we do is we partner with our clients, we build centers of excellence around software engineering and IT administration. And we help them achieve their digital strategic goals by not taking on short-term projects, but really building out their capacity that, align, that aligns with their three to five year roadmaps. That's what we do. I spent nearly 20 years at Oracle. I, bit, I built centers in uh, Costa Rica, Poland, Bangalore, Manila, you name it. We know software, we know how to build centers of excellence, and that's what we like to do for our clients. So we like to uh, uh, bring that to Texas, and that's why we're here today, to introduce ourselves to this community, and look forward to meeting you all a bit, bit later, and uh, like the previous uh, presenter, enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, time to get into the discussion, so our table leads will take it away now.